Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and today we're going to start a new series of videos. Right? We just finished a, a series of videos about uh, automation, Java API automation with Fresh Assure. And today we're going to start a new set of knowledge that we, we that I, th I think it's important for you as a technical person that needs to uh, evolve and be able to maintain your tests and everything related to infrastructure. And you're going to, uh, and the basis for that is Unix, right? You need to, uh, I'm going to show you the Unix commands, the, ba the basics commands and how you can apply that in your daily life. Uh, so for that, you, you need to be comfortable with the command line. Uh, I'm going to talk about which uh, terminal software you should be using, uh, the Git command line. So in, in the videos that I showed, uh, uh, I, I was already using the Git command line, but now I'm going to talk in details about each command. I'm going to be talking about shell script. Uh, so you can you can do some Unix automation. You can do some some customization in your own uh, machine, your own Unix. Uh, you also going to, I'm going to be showing you how you can set up your machine automatically. So I'm going to show you my setup, how I set up my, my machine automatically with everything that I, that I need whenever I have a new machine. Uh, the setup of my terminal tool, I'll, I'll be showing that. Uh, if you have been watching my videos, you see that my terminal is a little different. There are some highlights, some coloring on my terminal. Uh, it also shows the branches that, that the branch that I am in, and there are some other information on my terminal. So any vanilla terminal doesn't have that, but I'll be showing how I set up my terminal as well. But you might be asking, why do I need to learn Unix? Why do I need to bother and learn a uh, command line as well? Right, so uh, you need to be able to prepare the infrastructure of your test, right? If your test requires anything else except your code, besides your code, you need to be able to handle that. You need to be able to uh, run your test on a CI. You need to be able to run your test on a server, right? Your test might depend on a database. Your test might depend on the dependencies that's on a wire mock. So you need to be able to spin that up. Right? And you don't do not want to lose a lot of time uh, setting that up. If you have an, a new joiner or uh, whatever you develop in your machine should be should work fairly easy on somebody else's computer without the need to do a whole setup. So, and one of the things that I, I would like to show to talk to to show you is Docker, right? And you can use Docker for spinning up a, a, a dependencies using Wiremark, right? You can put on a, your Gradle task a task saying I want to download this uh, uh, Docker image of Wiremark, and this is my setup, and you are done. You don't have to do anything else except set that task. And that's not only for you, but for everyone, right? You can uh, uh, you can have applications, databases, anything in your Docker machine. But for that to work, you need to be able to know about Unix. Like if you need to uh, log into the machine in a Docker machine, you need to uh, do SSH to that machine. And once you do SSH to a Unix computer, you don't you don't have any interfaces. You don't have a Git uh, UI. You're going to have to use the Git command line. You're going to have to use Unix command line to check logs and do whatever you need to do, right? So that's why Unix is so important. It's very, it's on the basis of everything that I'm going to be showing you from now on. So you're going to be able to deal with services on a Unix level, right? Uh, and the video that I'm going to show you today is a video that I recorded in March before uh, the whole set of, sets of rest assured videos because I wanted, I first wanted to talk about this subject that I'm going to be talking about right now and that's why I'm really excited about is talking and having this video right now because this is what I envisioned when I first uh, created the, the, the channel. And then I decided that it would be better to start with Fresh Assure. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you set up a Windows 
uh, below Windows 10 and if you have a Windows 10 as well. So it's going to be the, the setup of having a, your terminal and the whole setup that you need to do in order to be able to run Git and have a, a, a proper terminal in your Windows. So if you haven't, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so, so you, you can receive the whole notification about the next video that I'll be, I'll be talking about. So let's dig into it. So first of all, I'm going to show how that would look like if you don't have a Windows 10, right? If you don't have a Windows 10, meaning if you have a Windows 7 uh, XP or any other versions of Windows below the 10, uh, this is how we're going to set up, right? So I have a Windows here on my computer. And the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to download a GitHub, Git actually for Windows. So if I do git for Windows, I have here git downloads and I can download, I'm going to download for Windows. So this is going to give me a git terminal. It's also going to, it's also going to install uh, uh, the git on, on, on that terminal. So I'm going to have the git ability, the git command line, let's say, on my Windows already. So I'm going to give the default options. I'm going to uh, add the icons. I'm going to give next, next, everything, default options. And it's going to install and I'm going to come back as soon as it finishes. So it has finished. I'm not going to see the release note and I'm going, I'm not going to launch because I want to show you this. So I have a, a git bash here and I'm going to do a comparison with the partial. So if I type here on this little box here, partial, Then I have a Windows PowerShell, which is, which is a better command line than the command line tool. The CMD for Windows, which is the com uh, Windows uh, command prompt. So I have some ability here. I have uh, LS. Uh, I don't have LS-A for, for uh, hidden, uh, hidden files. I do have cat. I do have tail. No, I don't have tail. I don't have SSH. I do have SSH. Uh, what else? Uh, PWD is going to show him in my, my path. So I do have some of those commands, but I don't have others. This one, on the other hand, this is a Linux one. So it's a similar path if you look at it, but uh, the structure is it's different. The ones that I, I did not have tail, I do have tail here, it's just waiting for the following commands. Uh, I do ls-a, uh, it's going to show everything in, including the hidden ones. So I do have a uh, ability to run a Unix uh, command line and I do also have git. Right, so this is one way for you to install the Git Bash for Windows. The second way is for you to install Sigwin. So if I type here Sigwin, Windows 10. Of course, in your one, you're going to be installing the Sigwin for whatever version of Windows that you have. And what is Sigwin? Sigwin is an open source collection that allows uh, a Unix or Linux application to be compiled and run in a Windows operating systems. Right? It's, it's not going to be able to run some specific commands like uh, installing packages, uh, but you're going to also have a ability to run a uh, Unix command line. So I gave, so far I gave everything uh, default. I'm going to choose one of the servers. It's going to ask me to see if I want some extra packages. 
So if I look here in the packages, I have PHP, Perl, Python. I have uh, all the stuff extra that I can that I can install. I'm not going to choose any of those, and I'm going to hit next, and I'll be back as soon as it finishes the installation as well. So Siguin has also finished, and I'm going to leave those marked. And now if I go to my desktop, I also see the Siguin terminal here. So if I open it up, it's going to be really similar to the git bash one, but this one is giving me some extra information related to some files. So see the slash home slash uh, half a j uh, and then some files. So these are files that is going to set up my terminal. So if I do ls dash l for listing, doesn't show anything, but if I do listing and hidden uh, files, then you're going to show you. It's going to show you the all the files that is showing there. The dot files. Every dot file is a hidden file. So this is a little bit different than what we saw in the bash, right? So and if I do pwd for my path is slash home is slash half a j, and if I do pwd, it's going to be more like a Windows. Uh, Pass uh, slash c users half a j uh, in the cdwin if i'm not mistaken all those uh all the file structure the home my home and, and everything else is going to be inside the cdwin uh, folder that it was installed that cdwin was installed meaning like uh c program files cdwin and then you're going to see the structure there for uh your home uh, that cdwin creates them. So this is also, again, this is not a Unix per se. This is a way for you to compile and run, and run Unix, but this is a Unix application, but this is not a Unix system, right? This is a simulation. So this is, that, this is it for whoever does, whoever don't have a Windows 10, you can do any of those approaches. I do also have Git here. Right, I might, since I start, I'm not sure if I'm going to have Git here out of the box. I do have Git here on my PowerShell as well. So we finish for whoever doesn't, whoever doesn't have Windows 10. And now for Windows 10, we have a little bit better approach, which is actually install a Linux subsystem inside a Windows machine. So there's, there's, there will be some steps that you need to do in order for that to happen. So the first one, you're going to go over your window here, and then you're going to go over settings. On settings, you're going to go to update and security. And then you're going to choose for developers. Here, you're going to see these options here, and you're going to enable the developer mode. You're going to say yes here and the developer mode has been enabled. Now you're going to open your PowerShell and you're going to type optional features, features.z and then you're going to have this one. You're going to have this pop-up and then you're going to choose and enable Windows subsystem for Linux. It's going to ask me to re restart my Windows, and I'm going to go ahead and restart. And I'll be back as soon as my Windows finish uh, restarting. Cool, so my Windows has finished restarting. And I'm not quite done yet. I need to go to the Windows Store and actually do the installation of Linux. So, you can either go through your browser or to the Windows Store app, which is what I'm doing since it's already there. On the search, I'm going to type Linux. And I'm going to have a few options. So I have Ubuntu, I have Kali for security purposes, uh, pen testing and so on. I have another Ubuntu, I have Debian, Debian, I have Suzy, I have a few options. 
right? So which one I'm going to choose? I'm going to go with this Ubuntu 18.04 uh, LTS. LTS is long-term support. So the Ubuntu distribution launches two versions every year. One is the 18.04 uh, LTS, and the other one is, I think it's six weeks, six months later, I think in October. Uh, but it's not a it's not a LTS one. The LTS is more stable. It's the one that has support, and they 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 have a more stable distribution. The other one, six months later, have some not uh, some new features, but it's not that stable. So I'm going to go with the LTS one. I'm going to install it. It's going to ask me to sign. I don't want to sign. And it's going to download. So this is this is actually cool because it's actually installing a Ubuntu inside my Windows. So I'm going to have an Ubuntu inside my Windows, which is going to give me ability to do various stuff that I won't be able to do uh, with Seguin or or with the Git Bash. So I'm not going to launch here. I can pin to the start. And if I go here now, I have a Ubuntu LTS. And it's also going to do some max installation. And I'm going to come back as soon as it finish installing everything you need. Ubuntu has finished installing whatever you needed. And it's asking me for a user and a password. This is going to be for my pseudo access which is uh, administrator purposes. Um, so now I have uh, my home. I do have all the abilities that I used to have, but you're going to see that this is a little bit different than the one in the Seguin. So if I do Seguin here, a little bit down here, and I do uh listen for hidden files you're going to see some extra ones right so uh, although they go through the same folder home oh it's different yeah this one is slash home slash hafa and the other one's hafa j so this is the it created the home based on the user that i created here so they are in different places uh, one of the ability that I do have here is uh, sudo apt get, which is a package package managing manager for Ubuntu, right? So sorry, there is a dash here, and now I can install on this Ubuntu uh, on this computer uh, a lot of software libraries and actual software. I can update it, I can remove it, I can, there are a lot of stuff that I can do and I don't have to go through a website and search and, and download it manually. I can just do sudo apt get install and the name of what I want to install. But each one of those, I think it's formula it calls going to have a different naming that you need to figure out what's the naming and I'm going to go over these in, in the following videos but now you have a Ubuntu inside your Windows this is a little bit better than having a Seguin or a Git Bash of course if you already used to Ubuntu and you have a Ubuntu or you have a dual boot installation you just open whatever Linux distribution that you have, but this is a great way for you to have an actual Unix uh, command line inside your Windows without having to go to the has or have a dual boot installation. Right. So I would like to thank you for watching these videos. This video, if you liked the the video, give me the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet for the channel, please do so so we can see and you can have the notification of the following videos. Thank you.